Hey everybody, Katie here. So this morning I'm going completely out of my comfort zone and I'm going to be uh, doing a video on a laser treatment I'm getting done later today. So uh, first I'm going to be going and running some errands. So I did put some light makeup on, but I'm sure they're going to take it all off before they do the treatment. So like I said, I'm completely out of my comfort zone. I really can't believe the day is here. I can't believe I'm going through with it and I can't believe I'm filming it. But here I am. A lot of people our age are considering uh, different laser treatments. There's so many options out there. It can be a little daunting. I did a bunch of research and I decided to do the Pixel skin resurfacing. It's a little different than the CO2. That is much more ablative, a lot more downtime with that. Uh, but I can go into that a little bit later. Hopefully I can bring my camera in and do a little bit of filming at least um, to tell you a little bit more about the laser itself. So the pixel says uh, this procedure treats small zones of the skin leaving surrounding tissue untouched and intact. These large unaffected areas act as a reservoir for more rapid and effective tissue healing and collagen production. The bottom line new healthier smoother tissue in place of skin perfections. I did go in and have a consultation and it turns out I read this and that I went in for the consultation and it sounded quite a bit different than what they actually say in the brochure. So beware. Brochure says it improves skin texture and firmness, safe and effective for treatment for face, neck, chest, arms and hands, little or no discomfort, no downtime, and long term. So like I said, a couple weeks ago I went in and uh, did the consultation and they pretty much said seven to ten days of downtime. There will be some pain, lots of peeling probably, fun stuff. So I've got my ice packs ready, I've washed my pillowcase, I'm getting that all clean so I have you know a clean surface to put my face on. I don't know about you guys, but I have spent a lot of time at the beach, with my kids, with my friends, at the pool, all that. And we had good times, but now I'm paying for it. So, uh, you know, I'm hoping to get, you know, a little bit more refreshed look, we'll see. I'll take you along track my progress with you, and uh, we'll see what we think at the end. Wish me luck. Okay, so here I am with uh, no makeup, <laughs> just waiting for them to uh, come in and tell me how it's gonna go. Those are all the lasers. I guess they're gonna numb me after the procedure, which is a little nerve wracking. Okay, so this is it, right after the treatment, yikes. <laughs> I can't quite tell if it's burning or if it's icy. This is the very next morning, and as you see, the redness is almost completely gone and the swelling, but you can definitely see the marks that the pixel makes. And I will explain more about this procedure after the photos. Okay, so here we are, and um, I'm glad to say it's day eight, and uh, pretty much it's not very evident unless you really get up to a magnifying mirror and uh, study it. There are little, tiny little marks, um, like in the photos, but they're just much more faded. And I should have mentioned earlier that in no way is this a sponsored video of any kind. I have no ties to any laser brand or anything like that. I just did some research. I was feeling like I needed, uh, my skin needed some refreshing, lots of sun damage. And so this is what I chose. So it was just my preference and suited my lifestyle. I'm just here to share my experience. That being said, uh, I thought I'd share about what to expect with the treatment and then why I chose the laser I chose. Now, earlier I discussed how the pixel helps your skin and now I thought I'd share about what to expect from the treatment itself. So like I said earlier, I was a little confused because what the nurse told me and what I read in the pamphlet were quite different. I spoke to the nurse and she's like, ice packs, uh, you're going to be itching, there's going to be a lot of peeling, it's going to be pain, and so, you know, I got a really different impression from the nurse. I was just worried that, you know, I was going to be up for two or three nights itching and burning and all this stuff, but that never happened. I went in and she reiterated what she said before. And I realize now that maybe she just has to say that because everybody's skin reacts differently and you never know what to expect. So maybe it's kind of like a disclaimer. I'm glad to say that the pamphlet actually uh, was 
pretty much what I experienced. Very little or no downtime, maybe some redness and peeling. Uh, there just really wasn't any pain or itching involved at all. Now also the neck. Um, she went over my neck and your, the neck is pretty sensitive and so I still have some red bands here and uh, hopefully that will heal up. But she didn't want to do that too much because your, the skin on your neck is pretty delicate. So even though you're paying for face and neck, there was minimal done on my neck. So I was a little disappointed in that. But when I got there, the nurse was uh, great. She explained everything that was going to go on. And I pretty much already knew it. I had familiarized myself with it before. The only thing that I didn't realize is that she was not going to numb me until after the procedure. So... Um, that was a little bit of a surprise, but it worked out fine. I can't say it's the most comfortable thing, you know, while while they're going through. They, they pretty much take the laser and they, depending on the area and how bad things look, they'll go over it, you know, up to two to three times. Um, they don't go over it this way two or three times. They go over it this way two or three times. So the pixel is targeted on this certain area and it goes over it, over it, over it, over it, and then moves on to the next. So that's how that's done. But like I said, you know, I've had a lot worse pain. It was uncomfortable, I would say, fairly uncomfortable. And the burning as, you know, she does more and more of your face, obviously the burning starts to get a little bit more intense, but it, I found it bearable. I found it bearable. And by the end, it almost felt like somebody had ice packs on my all over my face with no towel between the ice and my face so just it felt like either ice on my face or like a really really major sunburn she got that numbing cream out and within you know three or four minutes my entire face was coated and i didn't feel anything so that was great i asked how long till it wears off because i was nervous and she said mm, probably a couple hours so i went oh no uh, so came home and I decided to just do whatever really needed to be done first and get that out of the way while my face was numb because I wasn't sure quite what to expect the next couple of days. The good news is it lasted and lasted. I waited and waited for this numbing cream to wear off and by 9.30 my treatment was like at 11.45 so I, you know, by 9.30 at night my face was just starting to feel a little bit tight maybe a little bit itchy. Uh, she had suggested two things for me because I told her I was I was worried about itching. I had I had, had a, a treatment done for um, precancers, like a light treatment done for precancers years ago and it was horrible. It was so intense and itching was just horrible. I was up for three nights with ice packs. It was bad. Anyway, so she suggested a cortisone cream which I got maximum strength because I didn't want to mess around and I only used that that first night at 9.30, uh, just lightly. The other thing that she gave me was uh, this Zo Skin Health by Zen Obaji. It's, there's a couple of different Obajis, I guess, I realized. Anyway, this is hydrating cream, and it wasn't cheap. I think I got sold, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I didn't really need to buy it. So it's a really nice really kind of thick hydrating cream and it really did work nicely. After a few days when I could start wearing makeup, I actually wore it under my makeup and it worked. It's just really, really a nice barrier moisturizing cream. The whole thing that you really want to avoid is letting your skin dry out after this treatment because that is what's going to make you absolutely miserable. So you've got to keep the moisture in. Uh, between the cortisone a little bit and this, I did great. Um, and I asked the nurse, well, how, how should I apply it? Should I apply one, then the other? And she said, no, just put the steroid cream on and then use this. And I did, and I went to sleep. I was kind of like all night, oh, when's the pain gonna start? But it didn't, so it was great. And the second day, the, the swelling was down, and third day, nothing, no pain, no itching, just you could feel it is kind of rough and this is only day eight but there's still a few places i can tell it's kind of rough where the skin's gonna have to peel off there too i forgot there's actually three things that she suggested that i try if i have any pain or itching she said ice first so i made sure i had a nice big ice pack ready to go it was in my freezer and then like i said the hydrating cream and the steroid so i never needed the ice and I just used the steroid cream and then the hydrating cream and 
I really kept that stuff on and it really helped. So I will link this Obagi hydrating cream down below. Um, I'm not really sure if you really need it. I What I don't like about it is that it has petroleum in there and I don't like to put petroleum all over my face. Um, I wonder if I could have just stuck with my uh, Resveratol wrinkle cream from Swanson because I guess this has Resveratol in it also. This has just a lot of good products in this. I've spoken about this before on other videos. But uh, I can't say I really have any regrets. It, it wasn't cheap, but it does say it helps with itching. So maybe this wouldn't have helped with itching, but you know, I already had this and this wasn't cheap. One of the things that I wanted to share was uh, how I treated my face after the procedure. The first morning, I really didn't mess with it at all. I just gently washed it. They suggested that you use a like a Cetaphil cleanser, and the reason, I think, is because it almost leaves a little bit of a film on your face, which is why I don't always like to use that. It just feels like maybe my retinols or whatever I'm going to put on my face might not absorb. So anyway, I did use that for the first five days and it did leave that moisture and then immediately I went in and used this. By the third day I started kind of after it would be wet for about five minutes, you know, maybe in the shower or just leave it wet at the sink. And then I just start, you know, gently sloughing off, you know, any any skin that was just kind of ready to come off. And uh, kept doing that and then Maybe by day four or five, I was getting a little bit more vigorous with my rubbing, and it was really coming off quite a bit. So uh, that just kind of speeds up the process a little bit. So it took about five minutes every morning, but uh, it starts really peeling after your face is wet for about five minutes. I don't know why, it just loosens up the skin. I was really careful about making sure I used my mineral sunscreen uh, anytime I went anywhere. I put it all over, nice thick coat, and uh, because that's pretty much raw skin that's showing through. I can't say right now that I see a huge difference at all, but um, they say it's supposed to improve with time, so I'm hoping. Plus, in about four weeks, if I want, if I choose, I can get another treatment, and then another four weeks after that, another treatment. So I just thought I'd take a minute and briefly share with you the differences between the uh, Pixel fractional laser that I got and the CO2 laser. Pixel is a fractional laser, whereas CO2 is fully ablative. With the Pixel laser, they basically go in and they are creating little tiny, tiny micro wounds, but they leave healthy skin intact in between, as opposed to the CO2, which is fully ablative. They do not leave any healthy skin intact, um, which to me is just a scary thought. I know I've seen a lot of people do it. I, yeah. I just don't think I can. There's a couple more differences. Obviously, with a fully ablative laser, you're gonna have just a lot more downtime, a lot more pain, a lot more itching, peeling, and a lot more time before you can, you know, maybe before you wanna go out in public. And that is just something that you have to decide for yourself if you're willing to go through that. I wasn't. The other thing is the cost. So with the treatment that I got, like I said, you can you can either buy a package or you can just buy one at a time. The package is obviously going to take maybe a few hundred dollars off, but I wasn't really sure I wanted to do a package. I don't want to like invest in $2,500 and then after the first treatment think, well, I didn't even notice a difference, you know? So I just am choosing to do it one at a time and see how it goes. With the CO2, that's not an option. It's pretty much $2,500 to $3,000 for your first treatment and sometimes they suggest more than one treatment. I just like the flexibility of being able to just pay as I go, you know? It just makes it a little bit more affordable. It's all a matter of preference and money, obviously. I'm gonna link a video down below about Pixel skin resurfacing, so if you're interested, check that out. So that's my experience with the Pixel laser, and that's why I chose it. I hope this video was helpful, and if any of you guys have had any lasers of any sort uh, or treatment similar, Please share in the comments below. I'm really interested and we can all learn. Thanks again for taking a little of your time to spend with me today. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to click like and subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys. See you soon.